Today we have Mike Clark, CEO of Solar Alliance, to talk to us a little bit about what's happening uh, with them today. Uh, great to see you, Mike. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we have a lot of uh, interested subscribers and a lot of interest with your company. Uh, maybe you, you don't mind, start with uh, a little bit about what you do. Yeah, absolutely, Chris. Uh, great to join you today as well. Thanks a lot. Um, maybe start with a couple of facts first. You know, since 1937, the cost of electricity in the United States, which is primarily where we operate right now, has increased over 600%. Since 2009, the cost of solar has come down by 65%. So it's now cheaper to power your home or your business using solar than it is to connect to the energy grid. And so that's where Solar Alliance comes in. We provide the solutions for homeowners and businesses to take advantage of this great technology and protect their bottom line by saving money, essentially. So there are two primary areas that Solar Alliance operates in, and the combination of these two areas is really what I think provides a great opportunity for investors. Primarily, we sell and install solar systems to homeowners and to businesses. We've been doing this for years, uh, almost a decade, really. It's a stable and growing business uh, that's profitable at the operational level for us. So uh, a great, it pre provides a great platform for what we do uh, across uh, our business. But that's not all we do. We also have an innovative team that really looks for technology solutions wherever possible. And one of those solutions is something called the Power Shed. It's a solar powered charging station for robotic lawnmowers. It's an area of the business that has a massive upside for us and is quite scalable as well. So it's, it's uh, something that represents an opportunity for Solar Alliance investors and shareholders for explosive growth, but it's combined with that mature operating side of the business as well. Yeah, now you mentioned PowerShed, Mike, and uh, that's garnered a lot of interest. Obviously, it's, uh, it seems to be quite a novel idea. Um, how about you tell us a little bit more about the power shed and uh, what its potential uh, holds for us? Yeah, absolutely. We're very excited about it. And the response that we'd be getting in the marketplace uh, from potential partners is uh, quite strong as well. So it's something that uh, we're looking forward to continuing to, to develop. We think we'll have real benefits for, uh, for Solar Alliance and shareholders in the coming weeks and, and months for sure. Um, essentially what it does is it simplifies and improves the operation of robotic lawnmowers. So you may have seen these robotic lawnmowers. They kind of look like the Roomba vacuums, uh, but they're obviously outside. Uh, they operate remotely, they're rechargeable, so they can reduce labor costs and they can reduce emissions as well because they don't run on dirty gas. Uh, and they're perfect for placement in places like university campuses, government campuses, large corporate campuses, uh, medians uh, on uh, highways where they're, right now people would have to go out and mow those lawns. They can use these robotic lawnmowers to go and do that in the middle of the night if they want or uh, during the day, whenever, it doesn't really matter. And so what we did is we were working with the University of Tennessee on this solution. They wanted to be able to charge them remotely so they didn't want to have to charge them plugged into their grid tied system uh, right at their buildings. They wanted to put them closer to where the actual operation of the device was. So we work with the University of Tennessee, a researcher there. We have uh, filed a uh, provisional patent application for PowerShed as well, pending a full patent application. So that gives us some intellectual property protection, which is great from a potential licensing point of view. But essentially what it does is it allows you to cut the cord and place a robotic lawnmower wherever you want without having to worry about running conduit, running power cables or anything to the device. Uh, and we have uh, installed the first one with the University of Tennessee at University of Tennessee. It's currently operating right now uh, and it has some interesting, uh, interesting potential uh, in terms of the ability for us to, to market this and sell it and scale it quite quickly. Yeah, now that, that brings us to an interesting question, uh, Mike, and uh, I guess the question being, maybe you can walk us through, um, you know, the whole process of commercializing uh, PowerShed. How's that going to work out for you folks? Right, absolutely, and that's key right now. So we have the technology, uh, it works, uh, and it works for a variety of different uh, robotic mower devices as well. Uh, and we're continuing to test that first iteration of the device to make sure that it's operating 
uh, as well as we want it to. Uh, and that's been going well. It's been installed for more than a month uh, and the results coming back are extremely positive. Um, at the same time that is happening, we are in discussions with various manufacturers uh, and potential partners. So if you think of the, the group or the, or the environment of, uh, of potential partners for us, there are uh, manufacturers, so groups that can help us manufacture us this cell ourselves and then go and sell it to landscape supply companies. You know, your large retail chains that already supply and sell the robotic lawnmowers, they could sell this alongside those robotic lawnmowers. That would involve us, involve us manufacturing it ourselves. Uh, the other option is to partner with one of the large mower manufacturers that are out there right now and license the product to them so that they can then sell it as a package uh, together along with their robotic lawnmower as, or as an option uh, to the robotic lawnmower. Two sort of business, different business cases that we'd be looking at there, but right now we're sort of assessing which one would make the most sense for us, which would get us to market quickest, and which would allow us to scale the fastest. Those are all discussions that are happening right now. It's gonna be a very busy uh, final uh, six months in 2020 on the power shed side of things for sure. Well, that sounds really exciting, Mike. Um, sounds like you guys have uh, a lot of things going on. Um, how does the next six months uh, look for you folks? Uh, needless to say, we've had some tumultuous times uh, here in North America and globally for that matter. Uh, how are the next six months shaping up for you folks? Uh, anything coming down the, the pipeline or how's that looking? Yeah, so the last half of 2020 for us is going to be extremely busy. You know, the first half of 2020 has been, I, you know, I mean, there's no better word than chaotic, that's for sure, in terms of the global economy, the pandemic, uh, the reaction, you know, the health, uh, the health implications of it, you know, and our thoughts and uh, go out to all, all the people that have been impacted by it for sure. Um, you know, we have uh, managed to work our way through it. Uh, without a doubt. Uh, sales have actually increased during this period of time for us, which is quite positive. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a challenging time without a doubt. But our project pipeline on the solar side of the business is robust. In fact, our install crews are booked solid for the next three months. So that should give you an indication of how busy we are on the solar side of the business. Uh, and we'll be continuing the commercialization process for, commercial, or for PowerShed as well in the second half of 2020, uh, as I sort of described that process. Uh, so quite busy there as well. We'll also be looking at a few other opportunities, you know, uh, for opportunistic acquisitions. The solar market right now is quite fragmented. There's definitely an opportunity for consolidation. So we're looking at that right now. And we're also looking at project ownership. So the idea that, you know, instead of simply selling a solar system, we own it, we lease the system to, uh, to a customer, and we see recurring revenue from that project ownership. So that's something we're targeting for later in the year as well. Um, but I think ultimately, and not just for the last six months of this year, but you know, solar is now more mainstream than it ever has been. People are looking at it now in terms of resiliency, given what's going on. You know, what happens when my power goes out? Why should I pay a utility for electricity when I can generate my own electricity? You know, as we're spending more and more time at home, right now in these difficult times, we're looking at our homes differently. And I think more people are looking at the benefits and the advantages of solar energy. So long-term, I think solar uh, is an amazing investment. I think Solar Alliance is an amazing investment. And I encourage people to take a look at that and, uh, and give us a call if they're interested. Oh, that's great, Mike. Uh, yeah, obviously a lot of exciting things going on, a lot of things to pay attention to for the next six months. I just wanted to thank you very much for uh, taking time out today to uh, talk to our subscribers and investors alike. And uh, again, if anybody has any questions for Mike or myself, you can reach Mike at uh, www.solaralliance.com or you can reach me at uh, www.theinvestorscoliseum.com. Thanks so much for joining. Thanks again, Mike. Thanks a lot, Chris.